Welcome to Morning Manor with Pastor Steve Mary. Today's topic, Eight Steps to Restoration. We have dealt very corruptedly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. But if he turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though they were of you cast out unto the utmost part of the heaven, yet I will gather you from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Nehemiah 1, 7 through 10. When God's kingdom is in ill repair and disarray, the true heroes of the kingdom cannot rest. Let others live in the constricting confines of church complacency, but the true heroes of the kingdom arise to the surface and prepare to make a difference. For forty years, a carnal and spiritually callous king never concerned himself with the presence of God, but no sooner had David been coronated until he strayed in his scepter for a sword, shouting, Where is the Ark of God? Whether it was by casual conversation or by expedited dispatch, a message came to Nehemiah that the walls of the city of Jerusalem laid in ruins. When the king noticed the distress of his heart and inquired, Nehemiah had no other prerogative but to answer, Why not should my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my forefather's sepulchre, lie at waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Is there anyone out there today whose countenance is saddened when the baptismal waters are not troubled, whose heart becomes heavy when the altars are barren, whose spirit is troubled when you see the spiritual decay in your neighborhood? Where are the warriors that will go and retrieve God's presence? Where are the strong that will stand up before the wicked and declare, I'll not allow you to destroy my people? Where are the heroes like Nehemiah that will say, I'll not rest until God's kingdom is restored? Jerusalem was in reproach because the walls were turned down. It was the walls that caused Israel to retain its distinctiveness. It was the walls that protected God's people from pagan practices and lewd and promiscuous culture. Too many see the existence of walls as being unnecessary restriction, but it is the walls that God has put around us that cause us to retain our distinction and godly identity. Here are eight steps for us to be restored. 1. A dissatisfaction with the present. Rachel was not satisfied that she was barren, but she cried before God. When was the last time you got so disgusted in yourself that you prayed a prayer, God, whatever you've got to do, do it so I can be changed? Two, you've got to have a hunger for prayer and fasting against a spirit of oppression and fear, just like he did for the Israelites in the days of Nehemiah. Three, a willingness to repent. If there was ever a time that the church needs to put aside its phoniness and hypocrisy, it is now. 4. Return to the Word A church that gives into charismatic spirit of compromise and abandons the doctrines of God's Word is a church that will be scattered. In the last days, men will not endure sound doctrine. 5. Return to a fear of the Lord the youth of today need a rebaptism of the fear of God. Why go through life so unconcerned about your own soul? 6. A desire to separate yourself from the life you now live. Nehemiah, upon completion of these six steps, began to witness the sovereign move of God in his spirit. The Lord caused the king to give him letters of authority for him to begin the work in Jerusalem. 7. The church must discover their strength in unity. It is said, united we stand and divided we fall. We should be our brother's keeper, brother's keeper in fasting, a brother's keeper while we pray. And 8. The reopening of the gates of sacrifice. Simon Peter said, We have forsaken all to follow thee. Mary opened her box of alabaster and poured it all over the master. How do you think you're going to stand next to those folks who had given all? As God restores revival to the church in the end time, he's not going to be using the exposed new doctrine and the new gospel, but he's going to reach down and pick some stones that have been scorched at the time by fire of oppression and adversity. And like Samuel, Satan will issue his challenge to the church. Will God revive the burnt stones? Our answer is a resounding yes, yes, yes. The thought of the day. Though broken, you're positioned for a revival. God bless you today, in Jesus' name. Please remember to like and subscribe to my page on YouTube. Your support is much appreciated. Hey, we make a miracle walk, a promise.
Light in the darkness.